All right, so we've established this key idea that you integrate height to get area. and you integrate cross-sectional area to get volume. So here's a fun example. You know, maybe you want to know how, many, how much stone there is in the Pyramid of Giza or something. We want to find the volume of a pyramid square base of length s and a height h. So we have this pyramid with a square base and the height of the pyramid is h and the length of these base sides is s. And according to our sort of mantra up here, to find the volume of this pyramid, I can integrate the cross-sectional area. Now there's lots of ways I can take this pyramid and slice it up and get cross-sections, but the easiest way is if my cross-sections are nice shapes, like circles or squares or rectangles or triangles, something that I already know the area of. So the easiest way here is to take these sort of horizontal slices of the pyramid, and each one of these horizontal slices is a square, and if we can find the area of those squares, I can integrate these areas of the squares and get the volume. So we want to find area of the cross-sectional, which are squares. And to find the area of a square, all I need to do is find the, the side length of the square. And then I square the side length to get the area. So find the side length and square it. So I just need to find for any given sort of height off the ground or something, what is this width? And then if I take that width and square it, I get the area of this cross-sectional square, and I integrate the area of the cross-sectional square to get the volume of the pyramid. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use the fact that if I take the pyramid and I rotate it or translate it, um, it doesn't change the volume of it. The pyramid doesn't magically get larger and smaller if I do these sort of rigid motions. So I'm actually going to take my pyramid and flip it on its side and skewer it with the x-axis. So I'm looking at the pyramid um, sort of from this side and rotated. So by rotating the picture, if I view it from this side, I've got my x-axis going this way and my y-axis going this way, then my pyramid looks something like this where this is the, the base over here, and this is the, the peak. This is the base. So if I skewer it you know, directly down the middle, this is symmetric. So I know this total base height is s, and by symmetry, this length is s over 2, and this length is s over 2. And what's more, I know the height of the pyramid, now that I've turned it sideways, the height of this pyramid is h. So if I put the peak of the pyramid at the origin, 0 comma 0, then this is 8 units in the positive x direction, so this is h comma 0, and that tells me what these two other points are. That this is the point x, or h units in the x direction, and then down s minus 2 units, this is h minus s over 2, and similarly, this peak, this corner of the, the base of the pyramid is the point h comma s over 2. And now I can find 
the equation of this line that we see that this is a line that goes through the origin, so it has y-intercept 0, and the slope is rise over run, so, you know, do y minus y naught over x minus x naught, so slope is the change in y over the change in x, so s over 2 minus 0 over h minus 0, which is s over 2h. So this line has slope s over 2h, and it goes through the origin, so this is the line y equals s over 2hx. And similarly, this line down here, either using the same argument or using symmetry, because we just sort of take that side and reflect it across the line, the uh, x-axis, that uh, this is the line y equals minus s over 2hx. So, the heights of these cross-sectional squares, like if this is x naught here, then, you know, this is s over 2hx naught, and this distance is also s over 2hx naught, because you go down. So, putting this together, this height of the cross-sectional square at x naught is s over h x naught. So the area of the square is this squared. The area of the square is the side length squared. So the cross-sectional area is s over h x naught, the quantity squared. So finally, we found the area of this cross-section that if we've gone sort of x naught units down into the pyramid, the cross-sectional area is s over h over x naught squared. Now we just need to integrate that cross-sectional area. get volume. So remember that someone ahead of time, you know, went out and measured the height of the pyramid and the length of the pyramid. So these letters S and H are constants that we're not letting the size, the, the pyramid doesn't change as we're doing this. So these are fixed numbers when we're doing the calculation. So the volume is we integrate from, you know, the smallest x value of 0 to the largest x value of h, the cross-sectional area, s over h x squared dx. So this is the integral from x is equal to 0 to h of s squared over h squared x squared dx, and I can pull this constant out. This is s squared over h squared, the integral of x squared, so an antiderivative of that is x cubed over 3, evaluated from x is equal to 0 to h. And when you plug in h for x, you get h cubed, and you plug in 0 for x, you get 0. So this is s squared h squared times h cubed over 3, or 1 third s squared h. Um, which isn't so surprising that if you've looked at formulas for various things that are like cones, um, any shape where the cross-sectional area sort of grows like uh, a square, you're going to get this one-third area of base times height. That this form, one-third area of base times height, um, is sort of a common formula for shapes like this. So, here 
there's you know some nice exercises. You know these actually are just solids of revolution, but uh, derive the formulae, the formulas for volume of a sphere and volume of a circular cone, like an ice cream cone. This is actually fairly easy. Um, that if my sphere has radius r, so what I want to do is impale it with my x-axis from minus r to r, and then again integrate the cross-sectional area. So you need to sort of pick an x naught and then find what the area of this cross-sectional circle is. And for a cone of height h and um, base radius r, you're going to do something very similar to what we did with the pyramid that you're going to use the picture to figure out, you know, sort of what the equations of the top and bottom lines are when you view it from the side, and then use that to find these sort of cross-sectional circles. So here's x naught, and your base radius is r, and this height is h. So this is really nice exercises, and then you never need to remember the equation for the uh, volume of a sphere again because you can drive it pretty quickly.